there's tons of stuff that you can do with effects. And so um, the effects are over here in the effects tab. And I had one of the folders open here, uh, perspective. But let me show you, first of all, uh, one of the most common things, which is for transitions. So for video transition, I often use dissolve. And that's why I have that um, checked. Although let, let's just use something more dramatic. Um, and I'll go with cube spin. So wherever I have two clips together, I put a little transition. And um, then you can see this cube spin thing. So there was a cube spin. But so you could have many different transitions. A common one I use is the dissolves, uh, cross dissolve, for example. All right, so that's the most commonly used types of effects. So I'm just going to clear that, get that out of the way. And um, but there's other effects you can use. And so all these stylized perspective, um, transform. There's a lot of weird stuff you can do to your videos. Uh, what I'm going to do is a perspective thing. It's kind of simple. And uh, I'm going to go to this one clip here. And what I do is I double click on it. And once I double click on it, there's a tab in this source um, panel called Effect Controls. And it shows uh, by default motion, opacity. Uh, edge Feather is one I added. But I'm going to I just click on it and push delete, gets rid of it. Basic 3D I added. Um, I got rid of them because I want to show you how to add them. So if I go down to effects and go to this basic 3D, I just click on it and I drag it up here in the effect controls and now it's an option. Now they're all set to zero so it has no effect on my picture. But let's say on my video I set it to swivel. So now you start having this effect. Let me move the video down here. And I can move tilt. It starts tilting forward or backward. And distance, how far away. And so now see if I actually play the video. It plays in that, per it plays in that perspective. So I'm going to set these back to zero and show you that we can still, we can use our old friend keyframes with these effects as well. So let's go to the beginning of this actual clip. And um, I'm going to set some keyframes. So I just leave it there. And again, this means you're telling it, here's what's going to, we're going to start doing something here. So I'm going to click the swivel, the tilt. Ooh, there's some interesting options. But I'm going to leak it a little simpler. And so I'm going to say I'm going to set keyframes for all those, meaning something's going to start happening now. So then let's say I go a little bit down the video, and now I move this, I set some of these, so swivel a little bit, tilt that way, and farther, let's go, well, I don't know, some distance. All right, and it automatically set these keyframes, meaning because I had set these original ones. It assumes when I'm changing them that I'm wanting something to move. So if I look at this, if I play it back, let's see what happens. And it moved um, again. So, but let's say I want to do, <laughs> I want to get even more interesting. So I move a little ways down and I set these things different again. And it's yet again putting keyframes. So make that yeah bigger. All right, and then set it again. Move it down a little bit farther. And you can move the, the timeline down here or up above. And so I'll put it there. And let's move it again. this way and then this way okay now it should look like it's kinda doing some weird stuff so let's So 
So that was um, using effects and then using a timeline and using keyframes rather with effects. <laughs>